All right, guys, we're here with Tony again from Beretta Australia. Mate, Mate. great to see you again. How you been, mate? <laughs> it's starting to become yeah. a bit of a ritual, this, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, no, nothing wrong with that. Well, we're going to have a look at uh, Seiko's new range. We've got a yes. fair few, I see, on the website. Yeah, there, there is quite a few new models uh, out for, well, technically 2014. Some mightn't trickle in until the very end of the year. Yep. Um, but starting was, we'll start at the top. Yeah, absolutely. This is not necessarily a new model, but they've produced it in new calibres, which are quite unique. Yep. Uh, basically, they're only ever available previously in a 375 and a 338 with mag. Yep. Now, they're doing it in 416 Rigby, okay. 450 Rigby, and 500 Jeffrey. Cool. So, so you're the going, brown bears, going up, yeah. the big, big game hunters who want, want to shoot big game, big boards. Yep. Um, they are now expanded to, to include those those uh, calibers as well, and they, they don't have a dropout mag. They've actually uh, like a removable replacement mag. It's got the drop down floor plate. Yep. So are they about a three shot mag I'll or something like that. Yeah. One in the chamber four. Yep. Yep. Uh, moving right along to uh, probably one of my favourite new models. Uh, this is called the Seiko Long Range. Uh, it comes in a grey laminated black stock. Uh, same story again, has the floor plate magazine for it. It's produced in two calibers only, uh, 300 wind mag and 338 lapua. Yep. And um, it built on muzzle brake, 26 inch barrel. Um, for those long range shooters that want to get out. Really get out, yeah. Distances, that, that is the gun. Yep. Uh, two two uh, points to attach your sling or your bipod. Bipod, yep. And it's got a, like a decelerator pad on the back as well. Um, yeah, I can see that one being, well, well there's a, quite a number already pre-ordered, so again, they're going to trickle in late in the year, unfortunately. They're, it's more to do with the stock manufacturing than the action. Yep. They're just a little behind on that. And what are they retail, Tone? Yeah, they're going to retail for around $4,200 for the for the long range. Yep. Coming up to this one was thirty-eight ninety for those brown bears, and that's a ballpark yep. figure. Yep. Um, yeah, so look, there's people that do do long range hunting and shooting, yep. and this is Seiko's literally the answer to the prayer of coming down from what a TRGs were yeah. uh, to make a gun like that. Because I was going to say the uh, the long range is really just sort of nibbling on the heels of the TRG. It is, but it, it's, yeah. it's significantly cheaper yep. in, in the three in the, in the Lapier size. I mean, you consider a three grade Lapier TRG is probably closer to six grand. Yeah. Uh, looking at this one, forty two hundred, it's yep. quite a saving. Yeah. And you can put that towards your optics that you're going to use for long range shooting, which is you know, paramount. Yeah, and you still got your your decent quality barrels and so forth. Oh, being Seiko, yeah, so. yeah, uh, no problem there at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving on to the next one. This is basically uh, there. There's just been a bit of a demand that the fin light was only stainless, and some people, in particularly Europe, they just don't like stainless guns. They, yeah. They feel that they want the traditional look of a blue, but they want the lightweight of a fin light. Yep. So they've basically made a synthetic black yep. or a black. Fin light is for another name, but realistically, it's called the synthetic black. Uh, it's only available in a few calibers. They don't do it in a, the full range that they do in the fin light. At this time, it's, it's, it's medium action, 6.5, 270, 3006. Yep. And I actually do think they make a 308 as well. Right, okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, probably the, the gun with the biggest talking point coming into the market this year, uh, which will be available in a couple of months' time, is the Seiko Finfire 2. Yep. Now, 10 years ago, Seiko. Uh, ceased to produce the Finfire yep. uh, or the P94 that people know and love yep. and you know, those things hold a collector's items value now. They yeah. were exceptional guns, they shot exceptionally well uh, and once they stopped production of them, you know, they just the price is soared. Yeah, well, yeah, you still see them go for quite a high price online do. too. Yeah. So uh, Seiko, uh, we actually had the, the general manager of Seiko come out here a couple of years ago and do a bit of a tour of Australian gun shops. Yep. And everyone was calling for the Finfire to come back. So he's basically listened to them. He said, right, we'll reproduce the Finfire. It's not exactly the same. Um, you know, production does change. The way they've done this, they've decided to build it on what the quad action was, but have a fixed barrel. So yep. it's, not, it's, it's not an interchangeable barrel like the quad is. Yep. Uh, they've, they've gone back to the Finfire steel bolt handle, as opposed to the polymer one that was on the yep. quads. Um, but as an advantage, they've made it in 17 HMR as well as 22 LR. Right. So okay. they've got those two calibers as well, which you couldn't get in the P94. They were only 22. Yeah. 
Yep. Uh, you can get them with a the muzzle thread, and you okay. can also get them with open sights. Right. So there is a okay. couple of different options. Yeah, well, that's good well. because you know you still see a lot of people are a little bit traditional and they like those yeah. open sights too. Well, that's so. right. And you know, 22, you might be teaching a young bloke to shoot for the first yeah. time. It's not a bad exactly. thing to get him going yeah. on open sights. I mean, our sights probably a lot better than ours, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. That's fine for them to do it. But <laughs> look, a quality Seiko rifle in a rimfire. Um, that's now has a fixed barrel, which traditionally people prefer. Yeah. There was, a, there is a perception which I personally don't agree with, but that, that because it's a switch barrel model, it can't be as consistently accurate as, yeah. as a fixed barrel model, and that's what people's perception is, and that's fine. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, not everyone can be convinced otherwise, so they're now, you know, catering to that those people who yeah. don't believe that a switch barrel is going to be any better. Yep. Having said that, if you want the switch barrel, the quad is still available, so they're not discontinuing the quad. Yeah. Really. And what's the mag capacity on these? Uh, they come with a five-shot mag, but you yep. can buy a ten-shot mag. Oh, good. And that's for both calibers. Yes, correct. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You get two options. There are different mag for each caliber, but yeah. you can get extended ones for both. I think it's nine shots the bigger mag for the uh, 17 HMR and yeah. 10 round for the 22 Yeah, no, that's good. And what do they retail for? Uh, they'll retail for around just under the $1,400 mark. Okay. So about 1350 to 13 to $1,400. Yeah, geez, that's yeah. that's not bad. I actually expected it to be a bit more. but The Seiko's, look, look, honestly, a P94, which is now a, a minimum 10 year old gun, yeah. is going to uh, retail for well over that. Yeah. This is brand new and yeah. literally will do whatever the P94 did. So. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Moving on to the uh, the next Seiko here, that's uh, what they call, uh, it's a Seiko A7s, which we've had had in the past, but they've now produced them with what they call a rough uh, rough tech stock. Yep. So this stock is probably not too dissimilar to some aftermarket stocks like Bell and Carson that you can get. Yep. They have an aluminium frame inside them, okay. aluminium bedding. They've also fluted the barrel on them. And um, yeah, they are again trickling out. It's really going to take some time before we see them. But there is a few different coloured uh, stock variations. You can get it with a black stock, uh, yep. and a green stock. Uh, and in fact, they're actually going to even make it in a range. This is called the Rough Tech Pro. Yep. And they're going to make it a Rough Tech range as well, which we didn't get here in time for the show. But it's again same system. But with a heavy barrel. Right. Okay. And, so and will it be? Barrel. Will it be sort of like your 85 varmeter? Yes. That's, more, that's... more that profile. Yep. With a muzzle threaded barrel as well. Oh, but awesome. Still fluted. So it's still be fluted. It's and, I think it's blue. And what about calibers on this one? Uh, this one here is your traditional standard 306, 308, 7 mil 08, yep. uh, 243 calibers. Yep. Uh, where the range model, they are doing in some of the Magnum calibers, like 7 mil, 300 Magnum, and 300 short Magnum. Well. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Nice finish oh, to it. Oh, they're great. And they've got the, the TRG style recoil pad on them as well. Yep. So they've really got, you know, stepped up their game on the on the stocks for the A7s. I mean, the A7 had a nice soft touch stock. It's the most recent stock that they had, but this is just something that's been demand for, particularly in the USA. Yeah. Uh, and so they're, they're making their own ones now. Yep. I just see that typical uh, Seiko smooth action too. Yeah. But the A7 is, is, is look, it, it's a gap between the Tikas and the Seiko 85s. Yep. Still comes with the three uh, locking lugs on the bolt face. Yep. Uh, still has the open receiver, still can be top fed, but a few things are different. It doesn't have the all steel mag that uh, it has the same total latch control release as the 85s, yep. but it has a polymer mag with steel feed rails. Yep. So you can top load it through the top of the injection port. Yep. Uh, the trigger system is the same as the 85. Look, most features are like the 85. There's yeah. a couple that didn't, but then the price point is you know, probably $1,000 cheaper than yeah. the 85. So. Yeah. And that's good too. I mean, I'm I mean, I've got different rifles, obviously, but I am a big fan of being able to load through the top, yeah, especially yeah, like out in the field there. And, and yeah. you know, you're fumbling around of a night time or something, and you're shooting, spotlighting. There's nothing better than just grabbing a few rounds and being able to put them straight yeah, in. So no, I like yeah, that. Yeah. That's that's really good. Uh, the next one is something that's going to take uh, you know, a lot of people uh, by storm. This is basically. Uh, they call this a, uh, the Tika CTR. Now, that CTR stands for Compact Tactical Rifle. Yep. Uh, full length Picatinny rail, uh, medium weight, semi weight, 20 inch barrel, yep. muzzle threaded, only available in two calibers at this point, 260 and uh, 308. Yep. Um, but the feature that's really stand out is they've changed the entire trigger well and magazine. The magazine, as you see, it's all steel and it's literally the magazine that fits a TRG. 
22. Right, so okay. The 308 yeah. size magazine, they've literally built the gun around the mag rather than vice versa. Right. They wanted a Tika with a steel mag with a large capacity. Um, and yeah, they've come to the party there. It also has the oversized bolt handle, yep. uh, the tactical bolt handle, the te Teflon coating on the bolt as well. Yep. Um, yeah, so you've pretty much got no reflective surfaces on that all. one. So it's, it's like a tactical, it doesn't yeah. have the adjustable stock, but it does have the 10 round mag yep. and uh, a bit more medium weight barrel, not quite as heavy as what the tactical So would the is. would the uh, the TRG-22 mags be interchangeable with this? Listen, they are. It is that mag. Right, okay. So they basically have not produced a new magazine, they've just yep. built around the TRG-22 mag right. this rifle. Okay. So, Unfortunately, you won't be able to buy one of these mags and stick it in a standard uh, Tika. Yeah. You'd have to change yeah. the entire internal yeah. trigger system the way that one is to be able to do that, which yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to be a possibility. Yeah, in the nice compact but, rifle, yeah. mate. So compact tactical rifle, um, I can see that you know, really, really selling well here in Australia. We're, we're yep. working on them to try and do one in a 223 version. Yep. <laughs> and it's it's a it's on the cards. There's certainly a lot of discussion about it, and um, we think it'll be a real winner in the 223. Yeah, well. especially for those out there who don't mind doing a bit long range, but oh, a bit more recoil yeah. sensitive. Well, here in Australia, look, so. the 223 is just such a popular caliber. Yeah, ammunition it is. For it, and so yeah. people tend to use that a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the bottom gun's not a new model. It's been around for a little while. Uh, that's just the quad range. Yep. Uh, it's been out a couple of years now. That still has the interchangeable barrel ability, um, fully adjustable stock. Uh, the whole stock can be pitched left and right. Yep. As well, uh, the, sorry, the recoil pad can be pitched left and right, uh, up and down, as well as the cheek piece can come up and down as well. Yep. Available with or without a set trigger, and the barrels available with or without a muzzle thread as well. Yep. And and all your calibers, obviously. Yeah, the four, yeah. The, yeah. the whole four calibers. In yeah. The four rim fire calibers: 17 HMR, 17 Mac 2. Yep. 22 LR and 22 Mega. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Mate, I see you got the Seiko ammo now. Um, that's pretty new. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, Seiko ammunition actually has been around for quite some time. But, okay. Uh, we toyed with the idea about 10 years ago, but we couldn't make it competitive enough at that point in time. So therefore, now our Aussie dollar being a lot stronger and a bit of negotiating skills, we've been able to convince Seiko that this is, there's a big market here in Australia for ammunition. Yep. There's already a big market of Tika and Seiko rifles in this yeah. country. Yeah. Those rifles get accuracy tested with Seiko ammunition. Oh, right. We okay. all know how accurate they are. Yeah. Now, here's the fighter that, that basically your rifle okay. was, was built around. Right. So, um, we'll have it, we have it now in uh, quite extensive range with more to come. Yep. Um, and it's, you'll find it at quite a competitive price on the, on the dealer shelves. Yep. And realistically, if you're a Tika and Seiko owner, this is the stuff I'd be turning to if you if you want quality ammunition yeah. because it, it is made by the people that made your rifle. Yeah, so probably it'd be fair to say your best accuracy. There'd be a fair chance this would perform well, the best. Well, it's guaranteed to shoot accurately at least with that, this ammo. In all reality, it probably shoots accurately with most brands of ammo. Yeah. But yeah. if you're having trouble getting the right load uh, to shoot it, if it's not Seiko branded, yeah. most likely the Seiko ammo is the one that's going to make it work right, for okay. any other. So you've got a fair range of all the calibers. Yes. With it. Uh, pretty much all the calibers. They don't make a 204, but certainly everything else, including a few odd calibers like uh, triple triple two magnum. Oh yeah, and okay. um, seven by thirty-three, six mil PPC, yep, um, and some big calibers like seven by, uh, sorry, nine point three by seventy-four rimmed, yep, uh, nine point three by sixty-two, which is a little more common. Yeah, uh, but you know, so two seventy, thirty six, three oh eight, all the main calibers are there as well. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, it, it, it is the way to go if, you, if you're going to be shooting a Seiko and Tika and you want your, the ultimate performance out of your rifle, most yep. likely that's where you're going to find it in. Awesome. And they do various projectiles for them, so some will be better than others as far as accuracy, but they'll make hunting bullets, they'll make range bullets, yep. um, and certainly big game bullets as far up to the 500 Jeffrey. Yep. And uh, the range of what you're actually stocking, is that on your website at all? Um, yeah. Most of it would be, yep. yeah, I'd say there would, but it does change all the time, so there is each shipment more becomes available yeah. and we're, we're still new in, in, in the game as far as ammunition is concerned sure. but over the next 12 months we should be you know as, as pretty much an extensive range of what Seiko produced we'll have here sure um, yeah there's um, we, we, visually what you can see in the cabinet over here there's a yep. whole range of uh, 
of different projectiles that they do, and Seiko make most of their own projectiles, so it's right. not like they're necessarily loading it with the other branded projectile, although they do do that as well in some of their premium uh, big game bullets especially. Can you actually buy the projectiles on their own Yes, here? you can. You yeah. can. Yeah. We don't have them in stock now, but that's the, that's the next phase after we've established this ammunition. Yep. People might want to hand load their own with what they call uh, super hammer heads, yep. hammer heads, uh, game heads, yeah. deer head, moose head. There's quite a number of projectiles that they yeah. do. And we'll have access to that too, probably in 2015. Yeah, excellent. The only other new model, if you want to swing around here, oh, that, that is new for 2014, um, is the Super Light. So yep. This has been a, a project of Beretta Australia's to have this model here in Australia, because a lot of dealers are buying the, the Hunter fluted, but people like the idea of the lighter weight, but still want it even lighter with a synthetic stock. Yeah. So we asked them to create a super light. Yep. So basically, your light stainless is the very best selling Tika on the market, yep. by far. Now you can get it with a lighter barrel again. Yep. And that you save another further 200 grams off what the light stainless was, which was a super light gun. It's a positive. That's yeah. the reason the name super light's coming yeah. Oh, and good too if you climb in the back of a four-wheel drive of a nine doing shooting, it's going to yeah. take a few more knocks with that stock over oh, than, certainly. That, then you would uh, with the, the wood one. So. Yeah, no doubt about it. And what do they retail for, mate? Uh, look, they're going to probably retail about the $1,300 mark. Right. Yeah, That's okay. a bit of a wood ballpark. I'm not 100% of the, the landing price yet. There's still yep. a little bit of time away, then maybe another two or three months. Yep. Um, but uh, I know a lot of the guys in the Victorian Alps where we're from down in Melbourne you know, just want the lightest gun they can carry for the yeah. odd shot that they take on a set of yeah, deer. They're spending 99% of the time carrying. Yep. A little bit different when you're out pig hunting where you yeah. know, you're firing lots of shots all the time. Yeah. But, um, and what's the uh, calibre range with them? They, they make that in all the calibres that they made the other fluted one. Okay. But the, the exception of it's, it's easier for me to tell you the, the calibres that they don't make it in. Okay. Because yeah. of the flutes, they can't go to the bigger diameter calibres. Yep. So 338's out. Yep. So both 338 Federal and 338 Win Mag. Yep. And um, 9.3 by 62. They can't make those three calibres. There's not enough meat between the flutes, the barrel, and the bore diameter. Yeah. But 300 Magnum is and 300 Short Magnum is the biggest calibres you'll come in, and yeah. literally every calibre below that. Yeah. So from 204, 223, triple two, uh, two four three, three oh eight, seven mil oh eight, seven mil rem mag. Yeah. 306 through 27. And you'll, you'll definitely knock anything down here in Australia, the 300 wind mag, that's my own yeah. personal take. Yeah, <laughs> nah, look, I should, <laughs> There's I not much too. that uh, it, won't look, stand it, up for that. The, you know, if there was an animal that you say is an exception, it might be a buffalo or something, you'd rather have a bigger board calibre. Yeah. Wow, well, there's your opportunity to buy your, your brown bear in 460. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, nice strong uh, action on it, that's yeah, for sure. It's built sure. for it, so yeah. Most certainly. All right, mate, well, look, we appreciate your time no uh, once well. again. Appreciate and it. Thank uh, you. As always, we'll uh, put the link below this review so uh, the guys can jump onto Beretta Australia's website and have a look at the range in their own time. So sure. thanks again, mate, no and have a good show. Good on you, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, as part of the Beretta uh, review, we're here with Lorenzo from Beretta, mate. Thanks for your time. Oh, no problem. Good to see you again. You too, mate. He's going to run us through uh, something a bit different because there's a lot of you out there who've got your primary producer Cat C and also your clay target Cat C. So we're going to actually have a look at some Cat C uh, shotguns here. So mate, what do you got here? Well look, newest to the market is the new Frankie Affinity. Uh, it arrived in Australia probably around June or July of last year. Yep. And uh, since then the biggest problem has been not getting enough stock. <laughs> we're, uh, we're now very well stocked but it is an incredible gun, fully Italian made with a 4 plus 1 magazine capacity in a 3 inch chamber. Yep. It is an inertia driven system, very closely related to that of the M2 Benelli, yep. which has been very famous and a massive seller, especially yeah, in the States. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, this gun comes like this in this configuration in camouflage or also a black uh, synthetic stock. Um, and uh, it's got the step rip, so when you put the gun up, it actually feels uh, quite nice. Yep. Um, and uh, with a recommended retail price of around the fourteen to fifteen hundred dollar mark, we've been uh, uh, just sort of getting them out the door. Jeez, that's uh, not bad for that. No, no, it's uh, for an Italian made semi-auto. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the reliability of it has been incredible, and uh, this is sort of the the gun that has been getting people into yep. a proper gun and away from, uh, uh, I guess, the, the Turkish uh, uh, made uh, uh, semi-automatics uh, that don't have the, the same sort of uh, level of uh, reliability that you sort of find. Because I was going to say, Lorenzo, when you are saying about the price there, the first thing I thought of was that price, most people are charging that for Turkish-made semi-auto. So, yeah. So, yeah. And is it only 
Only 12 gauge or what's... I mean, it is, it also does come in a 20 gauge, but the Australian market being so restricted, it hasn't been something that we've uh, yet started importing. Yep. Uh, obviously everything can be done upon request, so if somebody does want a 20 gauge gun, we can get yeah. it. Is obviously the the only problem of Attorney General's approvals and yeah. things like that, which could take us three or four months worth of paperwork to bring it in, yep. but everything is possible. Yep. Um, and once again, it's something that we've had very, very new, and I originally just got in a couple just to test them. Yep. Uh, my counterpart in the United States uh, actually egged me on to go with this model because he said, look, I've had them for two years now in, in America, and I only ever had one back for repairs, and that was because someone drove over the stock with their four-wheel drive. So <laughs> they're absolutely indestructible firearms. So you got a uh, high-vis front sight too, have you? You do have a high-vis front sight. Um, obviously, uh, they can be interchanged. The, the thread pattern is yeah. the same as that of any Berettas. Yep. So you can have red, green, uh, white, uh, any color that you want. Yep. And um, also interchangeable chokes. This gun here actually runs uh, the same sort of chokes as the Beretta. Uh, mobile choke, yep. uh, which is uh, the choke that they had in the AL391s and all those sort of chokes. And the really good thing that they've actually um, done with the choke to help out, especially the, the beginner shooters, is they've written on there, which for lead shooting, this is a half choke or a modified or three stars. And if you're using this as, with a steel shot, it acts like a full choke. Yep. So as we all very well know, you're not supposed to use three quarter and full yeah. uh, chokes when using uh, steel. Yep. Um, so it just gives everyone that sort of extra help uh, as to what they can and can't use. And what about uh, running the different uh, shot sizes through it? Can you, you can combine them through, no problem, it's guaranteed to cycle? You can. Being, being an inertia driven uh, system, uh, it'll run most shells. Uh, they're uh, very, very low maintenance as opposed to a, a gas uh, yep. uh, system and uh, they will cycle absolutely everything. Oh. Awesome. Um, this gun, its life is to run 28 all the way up to 50 gram uh, magnums. Yep. And uh, you can do that easily and it'll cycle everything. We're yet to hear of anyone saying that they've had uh, yeah. jams or feeding problems or anything I like that. I see here, seven year warranty. Yeah, and the most important thing is that these guns, Italian made, so they like to back themselves and they've offered a seven year warranty. That's awesome. Which is unheard of. No other company that I know of offers a seven year warranty on, uh, on a 500 is $1,500. That's, that's great, yeah, really good. Yeah. Especially, all my viewers know that I do occupational shooting and I mean, I'm always on the lookout for a, a good, reliable semi-auto shotgun, yep. you know, because it's obviously uh, for that purpose. But, exactly. uh, you know, most of them that I've looked at, I've had that problem of either, you know, cheaper known brands, yep. but they're still fairly expensive, but or you go to the Italian ones and then you're having to pay the big dollars, but that'd be great. Um, something and that and you I mean, can and get now around. Frank is, um, is uh, under the, the Benelli banner, which is owned yep. by the Broder Holding group of companies. Yeah. So if you can't trust a company that's been around for 500 years, yeah, who right. can you trust? Yeah, exactly right. And I see, uh, mate, if we can have yeah, a look at uh, the new Beretta A400, do I see them around here? So we got both, obviously, uh, synthetic and then a, a wood. Yeah, look, the Beretta run a couple of, uh, of different versions. They're uh, all on the A400 uh, platform. Yep. And uh, we'll, we'll begin with this one. This is their uh, A400 uh, Action, yep. which is a, a 3 plus 1 uh, uh, capacity uh, shotgun. Yep. Comes in 26 inch or 28 inch all the way through the 30 inch. And you can have with a standard stock like this one or with the kickoff stock, yep. which is uh, pretty much two um, uh, pistons uh, 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 spring uh, loaded. Oh, the re recoil reducing. The recoil yeah. reducing uh, yep. uh, recoil ones. Um, and this gun is uh, with a three, and a, a three inch uh, chamber with uh, a woodstock option. Yeah. The A400 Extreme over there actually runs a three and a half inch uh, chamber. Okay. Uh, and as a result, you also get an extra shot uh, in the magazine, so it becomes a four plus one. Yep. Um, that gun there is also available in camouflage. Yep. Um, in, a, in a Max uh, 4 pattern. Um, and there is another couple of models around it. There is also the A400 Lite, yep. which unfortunately we don't have here. But the A400 Lite is uh, uh, pretty much a very similar version of this gun, but all built in very lightweight alloys and aluminiums and things like that to yep. make the gun even uh, uh, lighter. Just a beautiful gun. They yeah, really it is. Really just... <laughs> they know how to make a shotgun, put it that way. Yeah, Br Brett beautiful. has been at it for quite a long time and uh, yeah. they're definitely on the ball. It's beautiful. And what do they retail for, mate, here in Australia? Uh, 
the, these guns here, they sort of are in the high twos. Yeah. So they're in a different price bracket to the the Frankies, but they carry the obviously the the Breda name. Yeah. Uh, these yeah. are a gas uh, system uh, semi-automatic, so they will truly cycle absolutely everything. Yep. Um, the Unico, the, the, the full marketing name of the gun is the A400 Extreme Unico. Yep. Unico is uh, it Italy's, uh, Italian for uh, unique or uh, all, all, all up all together. So it'll cycle anything from a 24 gram feather light load all the way up to your 50 gram magnums. Yep. Awesome. Um, they've also got a, uh, a fourth version of, uh, of that firearm called the A400 Explore Unico. Yep. Which is once again that gun there but all in, uh, in wood. Uh, uh, stock and, uh, and foreign. Okay. Yeah, because I've only seen a couple of ads for it, you know, on the internet and things like that. So, yeah, I haven't seen the Explore and, and things like that, but I wasn't too sure on the differences with mm. them. So, well, our, our market, unfortunately, being so restricted by the the laws, are sort of um, yeah. make it very, very difficult yeah, for us. Absolutely. Um, the Attorney General's Department has given uh, a, a license called a display permit that allows uh, wholesalers to keep five of these guns uh, on the shelf. Yep. Um, people lucky enough to live in Melbourne or to travel to Melbourne are more than welcome to come and see them. They're in our showroom all the time. Yep. Uh, those who can't, unfortunately, have to buy off a catalogue, which is not the best way to yeah. spend your hard earned, but yeah. we're restricted. But then again, you, you do your research on it before you purchase something. I know me, even with my CAT C&D licence, you know, you're limited on numbers you can have anyway, yeah. so you do your, do your research beforehand. So, yeah, yeah no, an absolutely But all, all, all of our sales team is very highly trained on these uh, firearms, and if if anyone's ever got a question about anything, yeah. um, you, they can always call our head office, and all of their answers will be, uh, yeah. uh, all their questions will be answered. Yeah, mate. Look, I'm, I've dealt with you guys before, and uh, every one of my viewers know that I'm always open and honest about things. Yep. I've always had great relationship with you guys. You've been upfront, always able to answer questions and know your product, and I take my hat off to you for that. So, thank you very much. You know, uh, it's a pleasure dealing with you. So, mate, look, thanks for showing us through the range no, no and everything. Problem. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll thank probably you. see you next year anyway. So easy. Okay. Thank you.